Over Black Friday weekend, we're offering 22% off everything in the TLDR store. From our cute Countries the Shoes pin badges, including Sweden of course, to stickers and even our book, Brexit the Colouring Book. Get the biggest discount of the year by using code Black Friday. The link is in the description. The term political crises gets bandied around a bit nowadays, especially on this channel. But it's relatively safe to say that Sweden's been plunged into one. For a prime minister to be elected, a budget passed by her opposition, then her government collapsing, and then the resignation of said prime minister, all to happen in the same day, well, things aren't looking so good on the stability front. So let's take a look at what happened and what the future holds for Sweden right now. To properly understand this story, we need to turn the clocks back to June. In June, the ex-communist left party joined forces with the opposition to successfully pass a vote of no confidence against the Prime Minister, Stefan Levine. And this was a real shift, not only considering these unlikely bedfellows from either side of the political spectrum, but also because the left party had originally agreed to support the government, or at least not vote against it. But the left party were annoyed with Levine's decision to scrap rent controls. So they changed their mind, joined up with the opposition, and conducted the first vote of no confidence to be passed against a sitting Swedish prime minister in the country's history. In light of the result, Levain resigned, but refused to, at that point, call snap elections, arguing that with one year left until regular elections, scheduled to happen next year in 2022, and with regards to the extraordinary situation the country finds itself in with the ongoing pandemic, snap elections are not what is best for Sweden. In turn, negotiations for a new government began, and just two weeks later, Levain was actually reinstated as prime minister, not because he suddenly found new political support. Rather, Levain was reinstated because the opposition failed to block him. That's because Sweden operates under the principle of negative parliamentarianism. The Swedish parliament has four opportunities to form a government, and at each opportunity, if more than half of the members vote against the proposed government, then they're rejected. In any other case, the government is adopted i.e. unless an explicit majority reject the government, it's assumed that they have parliament's support. And well, in July, Levain's new government was put to parliament in a vote, a vote he lost 173 to 116, with 60 abstentions. Those 60 abstentions came from the centre party and the ex-communist left party, who agreed to abstain in return for some influence over future policy. Despite losing the vote, due to Sweden's negative system, 175 people would have needed to vote no in order to reject the proposed government, which they didn't, so Levain was reinstated. So far, so good. However, fast forward just a month, and in August, Levain unexpectedly announced his resignation as both Prime Minister and as leader of the centre-left Social Democrats. That meant that the Swedish parliament would, once again, need to vote on the formation of a new government, this time under a new leader. In September, the Social Democrats nominated Sweden's finance minister, Magdalena Andersson, as their next leader, a move that would put Sweden on course to have its first female prime minister. Before becoming prime minister, though, Andersson had to be formally instituted as both the party's leader at their congress in November, and then elected as prime minister in a parliamentary vote. And so, in early November, at the Social Democrat Party conference, Andersson was formally confirmed as the new party's leader, leaving the final hurdle to be a confirmation vote in parliament set to be held on Wednesday 24th of November. Fast forward yet again to the 24th, and the confirmation vote was held. Now, usually, this would just be a formality. If the previous leader of the same party got through Parliament, surely the incoming party leader could get through using the same parliamentary arithmetic. However, this time, the left party, who previously abstained, allowing Levain's victory, decided that they wanted to renegotiate. They threatened to vote against Anderson's new government unless they got some kind of say on the budget. And this is something that the centre party, who also abstained for Levain, weren't particularly keen on. They said that if Anderson gave the left a sway over the budget, then they wouldn't vote to approve it. In the end, Anderson was forced to accept the left's deal because, well, otherwise she wouldn't have been able to form a government at all. 
Anyway, when the vote came to pass, Anderson garnered the backing of 117 MPs. 57 abstained, and because just 174 MPs voted against her, one short of the 175 threshold, just like her predecessor, Levine, Anderson's premiership was approved by the smallest margin under negative parliamentarianism. But things didn't end there, because also scheduled for Wednesday was a vote on the government's 2022 budget, a budget crafted by the former finance minister, one Magdalena Anderson. Unlike her confirmation as Prime Minister, in order for the budget to pass, Anderson would have needed the backing of her coalition partners, the Greens, the Left Party, and the Centre Party. As ultimately, it's the proposal with the most yes votes that wins when it comes to finance bills in Sweden. And this is where the problems emerged, because as they said they would, the Centre Party withdrew their support for the budget with their leader, Annie Luf, stating that they could not back this budget due to the concessions that were given to the left party. The Centre Party has long been staunchly opposed to giving the left any special influence whatsoever over budget matters. So with the Centre withdrawing their support from Anderson's budget, an opposition bloc consisting of the Sweden Democrats, Moderates and Christian Democrats were able to pass their budget proposal with 154 votes to 143, meaning that the opposition budget passed, not the government's. In any case, Anderson had previously stressed that she would not step down even if her budget was voted down which immediately raised the puzzling possibility that a nominally left-wing government would have to operate using a right-wing budget. That possibility was pretty much immediately shot down by the Green Party, though, as they stated before the vote that they would have to consider their position in government if the centre-left budget failed to pass. And as such, only a matter of hours later, the Green Party announced that it would leave the government, stressing that it's not the Green Party's goal to carry out a budget negotiated by the Sweden Democrats, and that they could not sit in a government on a budget negotiated by the far-right Sweden Democrats. The withdrawal of the Greens from the coalition inevitably left a hole in Anderson's government, effectively forcing Anderson to resign, stating that there is a constitutional practice that a coalition government should resign when one party quits. I don't want to leave a government whose legitimacy will be questioned. All in all, that means that Anderson lasted a matter of hours as president-elect. Anderson had expected to formally start her role today, after a meeting with the country's king, but obviously she didn't make it that far. It is, however, likely that Anderson will be returned as PM in a second confirmation vote, which is expected to approve her, so long as the centre party abstain and the left and Greens also abstain or vote in Anderson's favour, something which they're widely expected to do, especially considering that elections are already scheduled to take place in September anyway. However, if the Swedish parliament refused to back Anderson or any other candidate four times, snap elections would automatically be called in the next three to four months, only for the normal election to still be held in September 2022. And unsurprisingly, most parties don't want two general elections in such quick succession. Regardless, it's safe to say that things are pretty complicated at the moment for Swedish politics. But what do you expect to happen next? Will Anderson get another go at Prime Minister for a little longer next time? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Like I said at the start, if you use code Black Friday in our store this weekend, you'll get 22% off everything you order. You heard me right, 22%. You can even get two signed copies of our book, Brexit the Colouring Book, for just $14.99 if you use the link below. Now that's some good Brexit news for once. Anyway, treat yourself and your TLDR-loving friends and family by heading to our store. And by doing so, you're supporting our work. So thank you very much. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.